Hi there. I'm going to uh, take you through some of the functionality of our Sandblast Agent EDR piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to just go and download a few files uh, from a file or an online file repository and just show how the agent deals with certain types of files and, and, and utilizing some of the settings that it has uh, in order to uh, give you or give the end user a, a clean file experience. So uh, opening up Chrome, we can see here we've got a, a repository here and if I click on the first file, what will happen is you can see the, the agent um, has immediately blocked access to this file because it knows it to be malicious. Um, if it didn't know the file was already malicious, uh, malicious, it would send it to the cloud for emulation and extraction. But because we already know it's malicious, uh, it'll immediately be blocked out of the uh, out of the gate before the user even downloads the file. Um, we're going to look at the behavior in and around two more files when it comes to this. So uh, looking at this one here the John Smith financial report. Again, I click the file and you can see the download is now happening in the background. Now the file has come down and this is just a, you know, an Excel sheet normally. I click open the file and open the file. It will open up in Excel. And then what we can see here is we have a, an Excel sheet. Now the policy is set to clean, so what does that mean? In this scenario here, the John Smith uh, financial report file uh, would have had uh, embedded macros in there. But what our cleaning part of this does is it removes any potential malicious content out of that. So what you can see here is the macro that's in there has been removed from the file. Um, due to how we've cleaned that. Now what's happening in the background is emulation would be occurring and should the user, the user need the original file, they can just click that from the engine to download um, the original file and then continue to work. So the idea here is to give the user access to the file very quickly, but that the any potentially harmful elements of the file have been removed so they can see the file, make a call on that file and then by the time they're ready to download the original file, again, they can just click the link and pull that down. The third file that we are looking at here for this particular scenario is the white paper. So again, if I click the file, and what you can see here is actually this file is set to convert documents. So what we're doing here is although the original file is a Word document, we've converted it to a PDF. Uh, a flat PDF. So what that does again is it gives the user a completely cleaned file and they are able to proceed as normal with the document. And again, should the user uh, want to work with the original document, then we can, um, we can allow them then to download the original file uh, unmodified. So this is just to give you some insight into how we can work with a variety of different file types and set the behavior of the agent to uh, accommodate different types of files. Moving over here to a different PC, Bob's PC. He is not running the agent, so again, if we kind of emulate the same scenario here, and we go to open up Chrome on Bob's PC, just wait for that to open. There we go. And again, I can click on download John Smith CV. Now the file has just come down, unmodified. And this scenario here, the user would open up the file. Word will open it up. And then what you can see here is the bad guys have uh, embedded uh, malicious malware into the innocuous looking Word document. And then a detonation has occurred of malware for the user. Now that's just one of the scenarios that uh, Sandblast Agent, as I said, can help out with. And we're only gonna cover a few in this, in this brief session. But uh, I think it's interesting just to point out how we can tune the engine to work and work with a variety of different files on a protected machine, and then just show you then the impact of running this on an unprotected machine. 
Okay, welcome back to the second piece. What well, we're back on uh, Pamela's PC now, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you an actual uh, attack of fileless malware drive by exploit with uh, a WannaCry variant. So again, what we're doing is we're looking at Pamela's PC. Pamela has got Sandblast agent installed. In this scenario here, we've got a, a couple of other different engines that form part of the EDR piece, and this is the uh, anti-exploit uh, engine. On Pamela's PC, the anti-exploit is actually set to detect only, which means it won't stop something from happening. But the idea here is to show you the remediation that can occur should the actual ransomware detonate. So again, if we look on Pamela's PC here, you can see we've got um, a bunch of files. These are Pamela's files on her desktop, normal user, if you will. And then what we're going to do is we're going to launch Internet Explorer here. And then we can click on a... A site that has been quote unquote hacked. So this is the My Store site. And again, the user has just browsed to a normal web store. And what you can see here is the uh, this site has been infected, if you will. The user has clicked the link, gone to the store, and now something is happening. But there's no interaction for the user at this point. So we just wait a few seconds just to see potentially what's going to happen here. Um, and normally, what will happen is now in the background, a file, you can see here, um, Pamela's files have now been infected by WannaCry, and encryption has started to occur in the background. Now, obviously, the user may not have their files open, but you can see here that this is what will generally happen, is this encryption will occur. Our engine has now kicked in. So the anti-ransomware engine has kicked in, and what it's doing now is it's utilizing and working in tandem with a bunch of our other engines to understand the attack vector, i.e. how the file got in, and um, determine what we can do about that. So in this particular scenario here, what will happen on Pamela's uh, PC is we will, hopefully, undo all the damage that's been done and revert her PC back into a state of working order again. So you can see here the files are now going back into situation. They're being restored from what is in essence a very a little hidden a hidden area uh, where we've backed up localized copies of the files as they've been accessed. And so what's happening now is we're undoing all of the damage that has occurred in relation to the attack. And again we just have to wait a few more minutes um, for this to to kind of do its work and by doing that then we can start to see that actually all of the original or the attacked files are now gone the encrypted files are gone on the back end and we are waiting for restoration to occur now whilst that's happening what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to uh, Dan's PC uh, which is also running uh, a similar a similar engine Actually, no, it's now finished. So we'll just move on to Dan's PC in a second. So if you look here, you can see file restoration has succeeded. And you can see that the original files have now been put back into place. We can now view the details in and around that attack. And we have a forensics engine that comes into play as well that's able to help build a picture as to the type of attack, what happened on the system, and then what we did in and around that. So this is very useful for the guys on the ground to determine exactly what was infected, what files were hit by this, um, and, and in essence, get into detail and understand some of the reasoning behind, you know, the, the what, why, where, when, as I like to call it. Um, this information is also passed through if, if the end user has got um, you know, a smart event solution at the back end, so as part of their kind of core back end networking infrastructure. Again, all of this information is passed through there as well. So the team uh, can have uh, a lot more visibility into what's going on. On Dan's PC, it's a slightly different scenario. So Dan's PC, uh, again, he has the solution installed. Um, but this time it's actually put into, rather than being a detect only mode as was on Pamela's PC, we are now in prevent mode. So again, if we follow a similar scenario, we open up the My Files piece, and then we launch Internet Explorer. And we run the uh, link to the My Store element again.
the joys of Internet Explorer. Hmm. So here, what's happening is again, there's a, the script is uh, running or the attack is running on the back end. And the behavior at this point is slightly different because we are running the anti-exploit engine, which is part of the EDR piece in, in the actual, um, in prevent mode as opposed to detect mode. So we shouldn't see, the expectation is we shouldn't see the attack get as far as it did on Pamela's PC. Now, although we were able to run it in quote detect mode, we saw it happening. We didn't do anything about it at that particular level. We still let the file detonate. We still let the attack go ahead. But here on Dan's, you can see actually the checkpoint anti-exploit engine has kicked in and we've prevented it from happening. So no encryption has occurred on Dan's PC. Um, and again, we can view it and we can see just that instant in here, but you can see that the relevant engine that has kicked in to stop that is the Sandblast anti-exploit. And again, we're able to quickly understand what happened, but because we prevented that from getting, getting to a particular point of, of, um, of uh, encrypting the files, um, it's, it's lessened the damage, if you will. So again, it's just to highlight the different layers, if you will, of defense that we have in situ when it comes to, to dealing with these types of attacks. Now, finally, on Bob's PC, again, Bob is the, the poor user that isn't running anything. So again, we can look at his files here. And uh, we'll launch Internet Explorer, actually, not Chrome, because that's where the exploit is actually built in. So let me just close down Chrome. Okay, so Internet Explorer is running and the files are sitting there in the background. So again, we're gonna to go to that same link. And again, if we look at the back of what's happening on Bob's PC, um, you can see that file encryption has started to take place. Now, bearing in mind that Bob is completely unprotected and he doesn't have those different layers of security running on the endpoint piece here. And there is no you know, EDR solution in situ on his machine. So in essence, the expectation is that, unfortunately, poor Bob has been hit by the malware. So this takes just a little while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, just gonna accelerate things a little bit here. So if you just bear with me. Okay, so we can now see that the majority or all of the files have been encrypted on Bob's PC. Um, click no at that point on that and unfortunately Bob has been completely hit by a ransomware piece and you can see now as well that a pop-up screen has appeared uh, this is an actual live sample of malware this one uh, some of the others I used earlier on in the kind of discussion were just demo pieces but this is actual uh, a live attack so you can see that um, there is some information here the guys have gone to great lengths, the bad guys, to ensure that, hey, if I don't speak English, we can localize it as well. So they've got everything in a variety of different languages there. Um, so if I highlight, for example, German, you can see here they've got some very nice polite wording as well in a variety of different languages to help the user understand what's happening. They've got a time element running here. So there's a countdown dimer, which I always kind of associate with a sense of urgency. So that is going to put the user in a position of needing to react and not necessarily think about what's going on. So again, you know, when we place that subtle pressure on a user or, uh, or you know, on anybody, to be honest with you, we tend to, uh, we tend to react a little bit quicker without thinking things through. And again, this is the subtle use of, of uh, I suppose, social engineering tactics that are coming into play here. Um, but everything is explained. There's nothing too aggressive in there in terms of the wording. Again, it's about, oh, your files have been encrypted. We have a tool that can help you pay us and we will then um, send you through the decryption tool to undo the damage. Now, at this point, there are a variety of different thoughts around that. Sometimes you can pay the money and you may get a decryption tool uh, through, uh, or actually you pay the money and you won't get the decryption tool through. Or if you do pay the money, you're then marked as somebody who will pay for um, 
you know, for the damage to be undone. And so actually you might get hit or more targeted in future again. It's just different mindsets, different ways of kind of thinking about how these, these kind of guys and how their mentality is, is kind of geared towards making as much money off of an end user as possible. And that is where our different engines can come into play and help prevent that. So again, this was just a quick snippet, if you will, of, of some of the capabilities of Sandblast Agent. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out and we'll be more than happy to uh, have a discussion with you and give you some more insights into that. Thank you for your time. We really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. There are many more great videos available on our channel, so feel free to take a look. And while you're there, why not subscribe so you never miss another update? Lithify. IT security done properly.